Today on Golf Destination, we travel to the beautiful island of Bermuda and recap the Gosling's Invitational. This tournament, with 50 plus years of history, returned and it was better than ever. We'll show it all to you next. Hi, I'm Meredith Gorman with Golf Destination, and this week we are here on the beautiful island of Bermuda for the Gosling's Invitational. Bermuda is known for their gentle trade winds and pristine beaches. For over 50 years, the Gosling's family has been hosting the Gosling's Invitational. It comprises a collection of amateurs and professionals from around the globe who both love the game of golf and Gosling's. Tournament director Robbie Thompson tells us more. After three years of not hosting the tournament on Bermuda due to COVID, due to flight situations, you know, U.S. international travel, the Gosling's Invitational has come back this year in 2023. We're so excited to welcome some old faces and some new faces. So in typical fashion with the Gosling's Invitational, the social aspect is just as important as the competitive nature of the tournament. So we start off the week with a pro-am at Port Royal Golf Club, host of the PGA Tours, Butterfield Bermuda Championship. We follow that up with a welcome party at 1609 at our host hotel, the Hamilton Princess. Great entertainment, great camaraderie. We're having a Gosling's Rum Tour for our social team. We're gonna be doing a, a partnership with Bee Dratty, a clothing company out of New York, uh, Summit Brands. And then we're gonna roll that into a mid-ocean extravaganza, a big party after the round, really celebrating everything as we cut players into the Seal Pup Cup and repair to decide who the champion is going to be. Bermuda Golf has a rich history in general. Uh, having a great place to start off like Belmont Hills with a lot of tradition, a lot of fun, a little bit of a quirky golf course, but we love it just for what it is. And moving on to a top 100 golf course in the world like Mid-Ocean is just dramatic. It's awesome. And then finishing up at a PGA Tour host facility, I can't think of a better way to cap off an awesome week right here in Bermuda. The field ranges from professionals working towards their PGA Tour card to your favorite club pros that are here with members or guests or friends of family here in Bermuda. The amateurs are some of the top amateurs in the Bermuda and around the world. We're seeing more plus handicaps this year than we've ever seen. You're a true testament to the Gosling's family and their commitment to golf in the golf space. The tournament came out flawlessly, but running an overseas tournament does have its challenges. Running a tournament on Bermuda, it's an international event. The challenges that we see as an operational side and as a golf side is, you know, getting things on island. We spend a lot of time dealing with customs and Bermuda tourism, and they're all wonderful people to work with, but it's a little bit different than in the States or, or anywhere else in the world in the sense that it's just a little more difficult. Everything takes a little bit more time and you have to be a little bit more patient. But being here in Bermuda, it puts your mind at ease. Everybody's relaxed and everything happens just the way it should. But behind the scenes is a little bit of stress. <laughs> Let's take a look at the three golf courses that the Gosling's Invitational will be played at over the next few days. The Gosling's Invitational is contested over three courses on the beautiful island of Bermuda. Port Royal Golf Course was for years the host of the PGA Grand Slam and is also the host of the PGA Tours Butterfield Bermuda Championship. This fantastic track will take your breath away as you marvel at the incredible vistas while you play. This unique property offers dramatic elevation changes and breathtaking views of the Atlantic Ocean. The front nine has some unique holes. The par three third hole is a short hole over water and wind is a factor. The sixth is a short par four. Driver isn't necessary. The approach is to an elevated green, so choose more club. The eighth is a mid to long iron to a green framed by the Atlantic Ocean. The back nine is a demanding test of golf. It really starts at the uphill par four 14th. Don't be left on your drive or it's gone. The 15th is a dog leg right short par four that requires a well-placed tee ball. The 16th at Port Royal is an Instagram favorite. This 220 yard par three has the Atlantic surf crashing below. If you miss hit it, miss right, otherwise your ball is in Davy Jones' locker. 
18 is a great finishing hole that is all uphill. Newstead Belmont Hills Golf Course is less than 6,000 yards, but it is probably one of the toughest 5,900 yard golf courses you'll ever play. The local Bermudians love to play here. It features elevation changes and opportunities to make birdies, but with out of bounds on every hole, big numbers await. The course is known for the devilish par three fourth hole, measuring less than 100 yards. Don't be fooled, the three-tiered green is brutal. The seventh hole is a good par three of about 175 yards. Water is on the left, OB on the right. The eighth only requires a 200-yard shot off the tee on this par four. The approach is uphill to a small green. The finishing holes get all of the chatter at the Invitational. 17 is a downhill par three with a fantastic view. Club selection is a must because OB is on the left and right. The par four 18th will make you grip the club a little tighter. It measures only 360 yards, but accuracy off the tee is a must. The green is large and protected by sand. Two golf courses only miles apart that offer two entirely different experiences. To be the Gosling's Invitational Champion, you will need to conquer them both. The Mid-Ocean Club was designed by Charles Blair McDonald along with Seth Rayner. When you walk onto the property, you immediately feel the history and grandeur, much like you do when you step on other iconic courses across the globe. It has entertained presidents, prime ministers, and dignitaries from around the globe. The Pink Clubhouse is as recognizable as any clubhouse in the world. It looks out towards the Atlantic's blue-green waters. The Beach Club for members and guests is in an idyllic setting, and the club has activities including tennis, but it's the golf course which Mid-Ocean is known for. Mid-Ocean has challenging and legendary holes throughout its layout, which is set upon an amazing piece of property with stunning elevation changes. The Atlantic breezes can wreak havoc with your round turning the most benign hole into a terror. The elements are always a key factor when you tee it up at the Mid-Ocean Club. The fifth hole is a cape hole that was once described by Sam Snead as one of the great par fours in the world. The par 3 13th is a world-renowned hole that tips out at 238 yards, but it is the Biarritz green that is known for its deep swale that bisects the green. The closing holes are along the Atlantic and it is the perfect ending to a fantastic day. You need a member to get you on, or you can simply participate in the Gosling's Invitational to check off one of the top 100 golf courses as being played on your golfing bucket list. Up next, we take a look at the Pro-Am and the parties during the week, and we'll show you final round action from the Gosling's Invitational and who will be crowned champion. Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Duca del Cosma, Italian golf evolution. Avidia Bank, honest to goodness. Puka, be original. Robert Graham, be the shout, not the echo. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Gorman here at the final round of the Goslings Invitational at the Port Royal Golf Course in beautiful Bermuda. Let's see who took home the trophy. The Goslings Invitational's first round began at longtime host course Belmont Hills. The leaderboard after the first round had some familiar faces and new participants on top. Past champions Billy Walsh and Dave Wetlaufer carded two under 68s and were joined by newcomer Joshua Seal, while Chris Moody was one stroke back at 69. The second day was held at Mid-Ocean Club and the leaders came in with little light to spare. Italian and Gosling's Invitational veteran Marcello Santi fired a one under 70, placing him in a tie for second with David Wetlaufer, one shot back of Billy Walsh. The final day was played at Port Royal Golf Course. 
After the completion of the front nine, Santi held a one-shot lead over Walsh and a two-shot lead over Wetlaufer. Santi would birdie 10 and 12, but the downhill par 3 13th proved pivotal as Walsh would double it, while Santi made a nice two-putt par, as did Wetlaufer. Santi now had a five-shot lead over Walsh and a four-shot lead over Wetlaufer. Next, on the demanding uphill par 4 14th, Santi would make a two-putt par, while Walsh made a great birdie. Wetlaufer would make bogey, giving Santi a four-shot lead over Walsh and a five-shot lead over Wetlaufer. Santi, however, would bogey the difficult 15th. Meanwhile, local Bermudian pro Nick Jones continued his solid play and would eventually end tied with Bermudian amateur Jared Dallas as low Bermudians finishing with a three-day total of 217. The leader stepped up to the beautiful yet demanding par 3 16th and hit their tee shots. Santi was just short but was able to get up and down while Wetlaufer and Walsh could only make pars. Santi had a three shot lead on the short par 5 17th and he played it conservatively and was happy with his two putt par. Instead of trying to hit the driver over the bunkers, I knew the pin was a short left. So it was good to get there as well with a, with a full wedge or full 52 in order to, 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 to get the right distance. Walsh and Wetlaufer would each make birdie, so when Santi stepped up on the tee on the par 4 18th, he had a comfortable two-shot lead over Walsh and a three-shot lead over Wetlaufer. All three would make par, giving Marcello Santi his first Gosling's Invitational Championship and the $10,000 winner's check. I started very well. I started with a bird on num number one. Then I hit that fantastic drive over the bunker, but I got the, just the end of the bunker and I was not able to hit the second on the green. And so then I, I was unlucky in one drive, I think in number five, it was five, five yeah, five or six, five. And I came out on a Devo and I made bogey. Then it was a very steady round, you know, I, fairway greens, fairway greens, I end up to be 304 to go. And the guy, my opponent was something like four over, so I said, you know what, don't push it too much, just play safe and par every hole and let's see what is happened. And good enough to win. I always thought that I was able to win this event, but I never won it. So finally today, uh, I, I got to win the tournament and uh, it was a great experience. You know, I love the tournament. Uh, Malcolm is a great guy and uh, he is able to put together an unbelievable tournament. And, uh, you know, and just for the cause, I really like to participate. But, you know, as a, as a player, I really want to win, you know. And uh, finally this year I was able to win. Congratulations to Marcello Santi, the 2023 Gosling's Invitational Champion. A big part of the Gosling's Invitational Week are the parties and the kickoff Pro-Am at Port Royal. The Pro-Am is a team event with one best ball of the four, and it's a great way to get acclimated to Port Royal Golf Course, the site of the Butterfield Bermuda Championship on the PGA Tour. The player's favorite hole that day is most definitely the exhilarating par 3 16th. Not because of its beauty or playability, but rather the Gosling's bar set up during the Pro-Am. It was a lot of fun meeting the players and seeing if they could put it on the green. That night, the award ceremony and the introduction tournament was held at 1609, the fantastic restaurant at the Hamilton Princess, the host hotel for the tournament. Players and invited guests, along with tournament sponsors, were able to meet and discuss their rounds and make new friendships or renew old ones. Wednesday night, after play at Mid-Ocean, the after-play party was held at the venerable Mid-Ocean Club. It was without a doubt one of the best culinary post-golf events we have ever attended, with delicious food prepared for the players and guests, all while overlooking the majestic Atlantic Ocean. The Gosling's Invitational always delivers on fantastic golf, camaraderie, and of course, a great social scene. 
We hear from Malcolm Gosling on the tournament's return, and I get an exclusive tour of the Gosling's World Headquarters in Hamilton, Bermuda. Club Benchmarking. Your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. Welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Gorman. The Gosling's Invitational is a fun week, and it would all not be possible without the involvement and support of the Gosling's family. We spoke to Malcolm Gosling about the event's return. Well, this is the first time in four years that the Gosling's Invitational has been back here in Bermuda. And we have players, international players, coming from Canada, the UK, and obviously the US, both amateurs and professionals. And we could not have asked for three better days of weather. Each course, Belmont Hills was the first course, and then Mid-Ocean Club was the second course, and Port Royal was the third. And each course was in immaculate shape, played incredibly well. What other tournament that you would play in? You're playing a top 100 golf course, a host of a PGA Tour event, and the most challenging 5,900 yards of golf. Nowhere. And equally as important is the Apre Golf. And boy, that's competitive too. <laughs> <laughs> the competition was stiff, and we are so proud to have as the 2023 champion of the Gosling's Invitational, the Marcello Sen. Please, if you want to join the Gosling's Invitational in 2024, feel free, go on our website, goslingsrum.com, and let us know if you want an invitation. If you ever get the chance to come to the Gosling's corporate headquarters here in Bermuda for a private tour, you won't be disappointed. I took one today and it was pretty unbelievable. Come see it with me. Gosling's brand manager, Andrew Holmes, probably knows more about the Gosling's brand than anyone who isn't named Gosling. So when the Gosling's arrived in 1806, they realized pretty quickly there was demand for rum on the island, but not enough land to cultivate the sugar cane needed to produce a lot of rum. Uh, in 1809, the British Navy arrived, and we all knew they liked to enjoy their rum while they're sailing. Um, so the Gosnes began sourcing rums from all over the British West Indies, shipping them here to Bermuda, and experimenting with blending and aging the rum to create their own style, which was originally only sold on draft. So you would bring your own bottles into the shop, and they would fill them up right out of the barrel that it was aging in. So originally the rum was known as old rum, but Bermudians started going to the shop, asking for the bottle with no label and the wax by the rum with the Black Seal. So it's the Black Seal blend that was created in the early 1800s and the recipe's been handed down over eight generations of the family. So every drop of the rum is blended here at the facility. So we're gonna to walk towards the Elliott Street side of the building. After hearing about the rich history of Gosling's rum, we were then guided to where the rum is kept and aged in the oak barrels. All the barrels are numbered and aged for eight years. All of the inside of the barrels are charred so that the more the rum interacts with that layer, the rum gets its color and accelerates the aging and it filters the rum and takes some of the impurities out. The Spirited Seas rum, which is aged at sea, has a much more accelerated aging process because of the different temperatures and climates back and forth from Bermuda to the east coast of the United States. As we reached the end of our tour, it was now time to sample all of the Gosling's brand some that are only offered in Bermuda as well. The family of rums continues to grow with new rums and now flavored ginger beers. Amazingly, Gosling's Rum has been around since 1806 and they continue to be family owned and operated for over 200 years. Still ahead, we learn what the term Belmonted means and I'll show you what my week was like at the Gosling's Invitational. Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Gorman. While we were down here in Bermuda, it certainly wasn't all work and no play. We definitely had some fun and I put together this highlight reel of some of the exciting things I did off the course.
Thanks for joining us on this episode of Golf Destination filmed in sunny, beautiful Bermuda. We'll see you next time, but it probably won't be filmed in a location as beautiful as this. We're at the Gosling's Invitational, the first time back in three years. Port Royal, Belmont Hills, Mid-Ocean Club. Cocktail helps, you know, calms you down a little bit. So of course we've got the dark and stormies. 16th tee at Port Royal there, and you're looking at the ocean and uh, it's spectacular. Yes, I've lost a little bit of weight over the last four years. <laughs> but anyway. This is probably the hardest 6,000 yards I've ever played. If you're not hitting it straight, you're going to have a long day here. If you ever get the chance to have a private tour of the Gosling's headquarters here in Bermuda, you won't be disappointed. Mid-Ocean, it's a spectacular golf course as well. Three great golf courses. Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Duca del Cosma, Italian golf evolution. Avidia Bank, honest to goodness. Puka, be original. Robert Graham, be the shout, not the echo. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership.